I think we're live. Okay. We're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Blades and Bonus Rippers Book Club, where we rant about books most of the time. <laughs> Today, we are talking about my pick, which was Shadow and Claw, which is the first half of the Book of the New Sun. And uh, for once, I'm the one that likes it. So it is only fair that everybody now gets to dunk on something I like and I get to defend it. The universe like keeping things too, in though. balance. Yeah. <laughs> we're kind of, we're split on this one because I liked it too. Also, happy birthday to Liana. Happy birthday, Liana. <laughs> As I've already established the rules uh, with my fellow Blades and Bodice Rippers co-hosts that because it's my birthday, then everyone has to agree with me at all times. So this will be a great live show. Comment section, this applies to you too. You can't disagree with me. I'm not sure that's okay. how this works. <laughs> well, All right, so. Be very quiet from, from the bottom half of the screen. I wonder if we should start with uh, kind of talking about, because um, I've already set the scene that we've not agreed on this, but like kind of talk about like, where this stands like in the genre and why, I mean, like, I know I'm the one that picked it, but kind of like why, this would be one to to pick up or like what is why yeah. <laughs> what is this and why so like i mean i don't know how much you guys knew about it before like had you heard of it before i picked it no like not even well, like in an author interview like been like oh i think i've heard the name no i i had heard of it once because tor was going to re-release it as like a classics edition and <laughs> i heard about that so i'd seen the title once but i knew nothing about it yeah, like I'd kind of vaguely heard of the author before, but nothing con concrete. Bethany, nothing? No, I didn't know anything about it. I mean, or I like heard it. about it and didn't like pay attention. Maybe I'd heard of it and didn't pay attention, but like I wasn't consciously aware of it as a thing. So, yeah. Um, I've heard it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd seen it around like the cover and like generally like was aware of its existence, but. Um, the two things that made me interested in it was, well, for one, I random, I think it was like book outlet or something, which is like a bad place to just be like, I'll add everything to my cart because <laughs> it's $2. <laughs> um, so like a year or two ago, like of the many things in my cart, like that, it's a cool cover. I mean, maybe you don't like it, but I think it's a very like eye-catching unique, like it stands out. I think it's cool. I like um, it. Yeah. So yeah, like... Done. So yeah, the cover caught my eye and like I read the, I read the like one paragraph description and I was like that sounds that sounds like a thing I'd read. So I bought it and then um much much later uh saw Pierce Brown raving about it and saying how like this was one of the his like greatest of all time like he aspires to this blah blah blah. He has like the first editions or something and I was like I have that I think. I think I got that. And I was like let me go grab that and can't pay some more attention to it. And then uh, then I noticed that it was blurbed by Neil Gaiman who said the best SF novel of the last <laughs> century. And I was like, Neil Gaiman and Pierce Brown signed off on this. I should read it. <laughs> but it's funny because Mara hates Pierce Brown's authorial voice and she hates Gene Wolfe's authorial voice. And I think there is a correlation. So, congratulations to Pierce Brown, because apparently like this is you. Yeah. He achieved his goal of being your least favorite authorial voice. <laughs> So that's kind of how I learned about it. And that's why I wanted to see yeah. what it's all. But like, I would just like to disclaim that like, I am i don't like it because Pierce Brown likes it because he loves Dune and I feel very meh about Dune. So I just want to be clear Dune. that I'm not just like, must like it because Pierce Brown likes it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just want to say I love Dune, but I understand why a lot of people don't. It's fine. I have a lot of nostalgia for it. I actually, I want to do a reread of it this year. I feel like I'm your baby for that because, like, I I agree with both of you on Dune, like Leanna's things and your things. So, like, I I respect it. I don't know if I love it. Fair. Yeah, it is not for me, and I know that already. But I would watch the movie, like, whenever that big um, adaptation. Looks good. It looks yeah. really good. Yeah. I do think that Dune lends itself to adaptation better than this would. I mean, not that you couldn't. But yeah. I can't, it would be very difficult. It would be. How would you tell this? It's just like random, like fe cocaine fever dream. Like, <laughs> however, I did. Um, I was looking, you know, as you know, because I was partly sharing some of it, and then I stopped sharing it because I figured I would just annoy you. But I, it's the kind of book where if you're into this, it's the kind of thing that you're gonna go start digging. And there's actually like three published books 
that are just like not by Gene Wolfe. They're like world of, dictionary of, like blah, 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 blah. So it's like the kind of thing where like, if you're the kind of person that is into this, it like, there's tons of like out there discussion and analysis and debate yeah. and picking it apart type stuff. Um, where was I, I going? Oh, I found a, <laughs> there was a, a pretty good book review. Uh, maybe I'll go back and link it down below after this is all said and done. Cause I thought he did it. He was fair. Cause he like mm -hmm. said a lot of reasons why this would put you off, but like why he personally enjoys it. And um, he kind of compared it to David Lynch's filmmaking style where like, it's kind of, it, it isn't, it doesn't really care about telling you what's going on. It might tell you some of what's going on. David Lynch knows what's going on, but he's not too bothered about whether or not you're gonna pick it up. You could, but yeah. he's not, he's he's not doesn't care too much about making sure you do. <laughs> it's very dreamy. Like, you're yeah. just like, this doesn't make sense for reality, but okay, let's go with it. <laughs> Dream logic. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, I get why it's not everybody's cup of tea. I think, well, I think, I don't know if you said this part of it, but like part of why it's a big deal for the history of the genre is that it's like, I think one of the first sci-fi fantasy blends. Well, it's one of the first dying earth <laughs> like, okay. books. Yeah. Okay. Cause it's interesting, right? It's like set so far in the future that it reads like a fantasy, even though it's technically not. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, because like, I mean, a lot, I mean, genres that build on each other. So even if you think of something as the granddaddy of that genre, that author was inspired by other things. So like Tolkien is kind of like, you know, the, the daddy of fantasy, but Tolkien was inspired by old fairy tales and old lore and stuff. So you can always go further back. So like, even though Book of the New Sun is kind of one of these like everybody, like current authors like Neil Gaiman and Pierce Brown are like that guy. <laughs> but for Gene Wolfe, he was in the text referencing like, the time machine and like things like that, where he was pulling and referencing from his inspirations. So right. it's always like building on the shoulders of your granddaddy. <laughs> so should we like go around and just give like an overview of like how we felt about it? <laughs> sure. Would you like to start Mara? <laughs> We've been very silent down here like, at the bottom. I was going to say, like, so far it's been me explaining why it's great. So, like, it's only fair. Go right ahead. Tell us why it's the worst. Um, so I should I should caveat that, like, this is a prime example of why I'm a mood reader. Because I think if I had been in a little bit of a different mood, I've been kind of slumping recently. I think if I had been in a different kind of mood, I probably would have given this maybe, like, a three star of, like, you know, not my favorite. But, like, I can respect what it's doing. Um, because of the mood I was in, I gave it a two, but actually I think I'm going to go back and give it a one. Um, cause I, I really, the more I think about it, the more I hate it. Um, I don't like the writing. It's the writing. I don't like it at all. And that's like one of my biggest, like things that will make me not like a book. Not because it's, it's not that the writing is terrible. Like for instance, comparing this to like Robert Jordan's writing, I would take this any day of the week. Um, it's kind of a pacing issue for me. It's like both, it feels like everything is happening and nothing is happening at the same time. And I just did not enjoy that at all. Um, I have other problems with it, which I'm sure we'll get into, but like at a, at a high level, I think like the core of what I don't like about it is that sort of authorial voice writing pacing issues that for me, I just, straight up just did not like this. So if we're grading on like, did I like this? The answer is no. I can respect it for what I think some of what it's trying to do. Amanda? Yeah. Um, I didn't give it any star rating because like, what what happened in this? <laughs> like, I was, it was like physically painful to read. Like it's very difficult for my brain not to wander just full ADHD so I, I was trying so hard and then it was so weird that I just felt like my brain was full of gopher holes the whole time like every time something new happened I would go down that gopher hole and like what's happening now and then I'm like wait there's other things happening in the story so like it was just like my brain hurt <laughs> but as for like the writing style, like I can understand why people would like it. I don't think there's there's nothing about like the particular like writing that I think is 
bad. I don't know. Like, it's not for me because it hurt my brain, but it's for someone. Like, that's kind of where I'm ending with it. I'm like, someone likes this. It's a cocaine fever dream of a book. I like, I had, I had more fun writing notes about it, but um, one of them was like, it's all the pretentious introspection of Fitzgerald and the casual misogyny and nihilism of Hemingway, but sci-fi. So that's how I was describing it. <laughs> so I didn't rate it with stars because I was like, I know what happened in the book, but like, I don't know what happened in the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm guys over here. <laughs> I mostly enjoyed it. Um, I <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, I think it's a really interesting book. It does take a lot of focus. And so for the entire thing, I was like listening to the audiobook and reading along at the same time. And that seemed to help me like, at least for me, like with how my brain works, that helped me with like following all of the threads of what was going Certainly on. Certainly with all the archaic language. Yes. To hear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, which I do think is interesting. He pulls out a lot of like archaic English that are real words, apparently. Like you sent me that article, that was so interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is, this is like, but he does so much stuff in here that I just really enjoy. Like I enjoy the like, the thought going into like finding archaic English words to use and use like referencing religious texts and referencing different literary works and making it like really dense and something you can pick apart and guess at what's happening. I enjoy that kind of thing. And so I had fun with it. Um, and it's one of these things where like, I, and I'm sure we're going to get more into this, but like my biggest issue with this is, especially in book two, the second half of it, is there is a lot of misogyny, like a lot of like, like the main character is extremely misogynistic. And um, so I didn't love some of that. I don't think this would be published in the same way today, probably. Um, so I can understand that it's like, somewhat a product of its time. I didn't enjoy some of those parts, especially later in the book. And so I think for me, that's what dropped it to like a four star. If it wasn't for that, honestly, or if there was less of that, this easily would have been a five star read for me because I just really liked it otherwise. So <laughs> That's interesting because I feel like this book is like, if I saw on paper a list and also like, if I wasn't me, but like I knew about me and what I had a history of liking and disliking, I would never think that I would like this because it is so similar or like, uh, again, like on paper, like a bullet list of what it, the project of it or how it's done is, is like so many things that I've hated. So like, it's kind of like Dune, which I didn't love because it's all this kind of like philosophizing and, and up its own ass. Um, it's a bit like Malazan in terms of the fact that it's like kind of really dumping you into this world and not explaining anything to you ever. It's just, you have to pick it up if you want to. And like, I got so irritated with that when I was reading Malazan and like, uh, the misogyny in it. Like I'm, when, well, when we read romance books, like I'm usually the one that's just being like, no, how dare you? So like, usually like even the smallest bit of something that I don't like how the woman is being treated, I'm just like, no. But so this book is like pedantic. It obfuscates things needlessly and there's tons of misogyny. And I'm just like, yeah, but it's so brilliant though. <laughs> you know what? I yeah. thought you would like it as soon as I started reading it because I I was it like, was yeah. a little bit like by force alone. Yeah, I did like that. You really like that. And that one is also just like, what, what, it's what also is very what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's very what the fucky. And I was like, I feel like these two books like would hang out. I was going to say, so Mara, if you were ever considering picking up by force alone, I think this is your sign that you should not. <laughs> I think um, me and you, yeah, well, think maybe you might like it. I don't know. It felt yeah. like um, Kurt Vonnegut was writing Abercrombie. Which sounds cool in theory, but it didn't work for me. I don't like Kurt Vonnegut, so there you go. Mara, are we best friends? <laughs> I've never read Vonnegut, but I want to. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I suspect I would like Vonnegut. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read him as a adult. I only read him as a teen and was like, but why? Um, <laughs> yeah, like I, <laughs> I, I do find this book to be pretty, what I would describe as faux deep. Um, meaning- Like I bad teenage that, poetry. <laughs> I, I, I think that 
he's dressing up pretty basic ideas and pretty grandiose terms. So I'm like, okay, go off, enjoy. Um, <laughs> but this gets into my whole theory of like, people like what they like. Like that's why the misogyny did like, in a diff if I was liking the book, I probably could have given the misogyny a pass. Do you know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have loved it, but I would have been like, well, okay, I'm vibing with this besides that. But like people like what they like. So like if you're into the book, there are things about it that you may not love, but you'll give it a pass. And if you're not into the book, yeah, you won't give it a pass. It's the Dobbler Dahmer. I do think it bears mentioning that even though I think all four of us agreed that like regardless of the intent, the execution came off quite misogynist. So like that, like if you're just looking at the text, like we all felt that way about it. Yeah. However, like if you care about authorial intent, like there is a lot of evidence to suggest that that is not his intent, that these are not his views. And so like for me, like that makes a difference. I like when I was reading Dracula, I put it down because I was so angry and I started Googling Bram Stoker because I was like, does he think this? Does he think that, is this what he thinks? And I found evidence that he was way more misogynistic than even what was in Dracula. And I was like, I am not reading this. See, Good I day. Like <laughs> so it didn't bother me that much. <laughs> again, yeah. people like what they yeah. like. Yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, I think like it, it matters for me also that I, I think his intention with this, whether he pulled it off effectively or not, but like, I think his intention was to shine a light on like issues of misogyny and like care with the character, like over sexual. I, I, I think that he is trying to make Severin a, a complete, like not a, a perfect person. Yeah. I don't think that he in 1980 had language to say, I am trying to challenge misogyny. Like I just don't, <laughs> I mean, I don't know that he would have said misogyny so much, but like, I like, I don't know. Like, I've read some things suggesting that that the the over sexualization of women and like the way that he's constantly jumping from woman to woman and and, and wanting to have sex with everybody, like that is something that is being critiqued. Like, whether he would call it, my guess is that it's becoming just because from what we've read it's a very catholic point of view my yeah. guess is coming from that not like i'm a secret feminist like i just don't i, I think, I don't think it's in between those two from again what i've seen and what i know about what's to come and what his background is and whatever like i don't think he's challenging like misogyny i don't think i don't, like, think, he's, I don't yeah. think he's challenging that but i also don't think that like it's he is this is, I, I don't think he's outright doing that, but because of what is to come later, I do think he intends this very much to be like a bad part of Severian and a thing that we are not meant to approve of and a thing that we are meant to find distasteful and disgusting and just generally the world that we're supposed to be kind of horrified by how like horrible to women this world is and just how just generally everything is kind of awful. And like, I don't think he thought through how insanely misogynistic some of this is but I do think his intent was to make this one of um, one of myriad factors painting this world bleakly, and that we are meant to like see that yeah. as, see it as bleak and bad. I agree with that, but that that sorry, I'm going backwards. <laughs> I agree with that, but I do not think that, that equals challenging gender roles, challenging yeah the, yeah no objects. Yeah. That's fair. I, I don't think those are the same thing. And women are such just poorly treated objects in this world. Hashtag justice for Yolenta above all. Like, I felt awful. There's a lot to unpack there with Yolenta. Thecla cannot even rest in peace. Like, Thecla is used and then abused even in her death. And that it was, was that was like what it And like, well, here again, like, I, I, I hate my tip from not liking to just like outright like say, i i hate when someone tells me well you have to read the next book to know you know like i i hate that because like a book stands on its own and you're allowed to make judgments on it based on how the book is by itself but again for me deciding whether or not i'm going to go on with this like where is this gonna go like am i is it is it only gonna get worse from here does the author mean these you know what i mean so like says i was generally liking it but i'm not comfortable with that so for me it was important to know where this is gonna go does it get challenged blah 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 so like what I understand, because I was trying to find this out without spoiling myself, that like he does get very like overtly confronted by a female figure that comes because like Earth is dying and Earth is no longer connected to the future of humanity who is left. 
but there are like voyeurs of humanity that come back to earth periodically because like, isn't that nostalgic? That's where we came from. And a much more like future woman person confronts Severian mm -hmm. in a very like, none of this is okay kind of way <laughs> that okay. makes him be like, oh. <laughs> that's interesting. That is interesting. Well, knowing Severian, I feel like he would want like a femdom. Like he seems like the guy that would want one. I can see that. Yeah. I said what I said. <laughs> like yeah. if a, a femdom was separate, he would be into that. <laughs> yeah. I think like the stuff with Thecla didn't bother me as much because like I think it's interesting as a um it's uh, like it's metaphor. Rich. I mean I yeah. get it, but yeah. it's just in the reality of her as a character or an actual person in this world not as a symbol mm -hmm. well none of the women well actually no one but severian felt like a character yeah i was gonna say no, no like, to be not fair. The, like the men either the men either like yeah. nobody yeah. but yeah, i think that's the thing is like i don't think severian sees other people as people really like they're all sort of symbolic in his world so like you know and we're kind of in his head so well, so like i think it's arguably an unreliable narrator like, treating people as objects yeah <laughs> not just which the you know, now that we're saying that, I didn't think about that until now, but I am somebody who tends to be a very character-driven reader, especially. In I am too, which is why I shouldn't like this. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, maybe that's part of why I wasn't vibing with it, because I'm like, nobody feels like a person in this. I think I mean, for a book like, like this, this. Yeah. Yeah. nothing feels yeah. like it's real. Everything's yeah. crazy. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Go for I really like character-driven books, but I also like ideas driven books and so in a book like this i'm not bothered by the this, lack of good characters because i'm really into the ideas so for and, me like yeah. that's what i enjoyed i think we've just landed on <laughs> the difference here of like i don't i don't think any of these characters are people and i don't think i think the ideas are okay but pretty mm -hmm. Man, plus you love a puzzle box, and this I is do. I love. A puzzle I box. don't. It's very puzzle boxy. Why do I like this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you picked something on your birthday that you were enjoying. Yeah, but I was just thinking about like again, and I know you don't like uh, Pierce Brown, but like I do think. I mean, because I, if I, I think Pierce Brown is his work. Like I enjoy far more, and like not Red Rising, I don't like Red Rising very much, but like Golden Sun On <laughs> is fantastic. And I think that he, to some degree, I've always kind of said that Red Rising reads more like fantasy, like it's sci-fi for sure. There's no question about that, it is sci-fi, but like because of the nature of his storytelling, he kind of makes it kind of grandiose, kind of like an epic poem style. And he's like, he loves Greek classics, so that makes sense. Um, so like this, this, also has that vibe you know where it feels like a fantasy and it feels like archaic in its language mm -hmm. but it is very much sci-fi however pierce brown whether i think you would agree even though you didn't care for his work that much that his characters feel like characters a lot more than this so like he's oh, taking yeah, some exactly. of that like yeah let's do science fantasy let's play with ideas let's navel gaze let's philosophize but have characters that feel like characters and like yeah. the puzzle box thing isn't like there are some mysteries and reveals, but it's not just like one giant WTF puzzle box. Like there are mysteries, but yeah. it's not like. Well, I think I wouldn't be shocked to find out that N.K. Jemison had read him because there are things in this that remind me a little bit of things in her books. Um, and so, but I think she's much better. Like, I think she's, she yeah. does, <laughs> like I think I think like what they're saying this book accomplishes and did for its time like I think she is the modern version of that and I in my opinion like even better like I from because she's also like feminist and well, she's yeah, like, like anti-racist the broken, earth. The broken <laughs> yeah. earth series doesn't really make a lot of sense either at first it has like multiple different perspectives it starts in second person and you're just like mm -hmm. wait what yeah so it's already like this dying earth you know, type of book, yep. and it's like nothing makes sense, and you're like, who are these people, and what is happening? This is also a fever dream. Mm -hmm. But her characters felt like people and had real emotions that it could still connect to them. And this one is just like these are just props, and here is this prop in this fever dream. <laughs> like, yep. So yeah. I thought it felt like weird. And I thought of another reason, which was originally on my list, but I forgot <laughs> to say why I should not like this because of the history of what I have not liked, and that is. I don't, I very rarely like heavy religious imagery. 
And this has so yeah. much religious imagery. It definitely <laughs> The does. characters I'm... are like characters. It's pedantic. I'm like, I don't know why I like this, but I do. <laughs> but I'll keep playing you hate you. <laughs> we keep talking about how kind of uh, bonkers this plot is. Can I take this moment to do the dramatic reading of the Wikipedia? Please do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do but, it. Do it. Which, like, also just, like, quickly, like, if anyone has read this and, uh, like, after finishing, it feels like, I, I what? Like, the Wikipedia summary, like, you will find that yes. you did understand everything that happened, yes. but seeing it, like, summarized, you're like, oh. <laughs> yes. It's like, it's this, so if you, if you haven't read this and for whatever reason you're watching and you're like, oh, maybe I'm missing some context, like, no, you're not. Like this is yeah. you're not. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, quickly again, that review that I mentioned earlier with that that guy that I'll link down below. Um, he was saying how like he, he tends to do spoilers in his reviews because he doesn't kind of know how to review a book uh, with uh, out spoilers. But he said that said, I don't feel like anything I tell you about this book, no matter how spoilery it is, could spoil it for you I, yeah, because I, like it's yeah. just <laughs> like yeah. I really I don't yeah. think so. So here's no. here's the summary of the end of the second book. And this is all accurate. Like, this is a very accurate yeah. Wikipedia article. Um, stumbling, stumbling into the gardens of the house absolute, Severin is reunited with Dorcas, Dr. Talos, and Bland Alders. Bl Blanders, sorry. I didn't read that weird. Oh, Blanders. Blanders. Who are preparing to perform the play they performed in the first book. Severin participates again, but the play is cut short when <clears throat> Blanders flies into a rage and attacks the audience, revealing that aliens are among them. Talos and Blanders part ways with Severin and Dorcas at a crossroad, Severin handing to heading towards Thrax and the giant and his physician heading towards Lake Diuturna. Diuturna? Yeah. Yolenta tries to have Talos take her with him, but he has no more use for her now that the plays are no longer necessary and Severin takes her. As they head north, Yolenta is bitten by a bloodbath and falls ill. Severin realizes that she has been scientifically altered by Dr. Talos to be gorgeous and desirable, but is quickly becoming sickly and unattractive. Soon, the trio meets an old farmer who tells them that they must pass through an enigmatic stone city to get to Thrax. In the ruined city, Severin sees a pair of witches initiate a dreamlike event in which ghostly dancers of the, stone's past, uh, of the stone town's past led in a ritual by a teacher named Apu Pu. Punchao, I really struggled with names in this book, if you can't tell, <laughs> fill the area and fight the witch's servant, who was Vlad Vodalus? Is that how we say his name? Vodalus. 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 I listened to the audiobooks. So I think that Okay, helps. that probably helped. Vodalus <laughs> yeah. is Lieutenant Hildegren. The book ends with Dorcas and Severin emerging from a stupor in the stone town, Yolenta dead and revealed to be the waitress whom Dr. Talos had promised to make beautiful. And the witches and, Hel and Hildegrin are gone. Is that a reveal? It's obvious that was the waitress, the whole- That's what I thought. I was talking to Leanna. I was talking about this to somebody, but yeah, I thought it was obvious the whole time. Like from the first time yeah. we met her, I was like, she's the waitress, right? <laughs> like, obviously they're like, hey girl at this bar, come hang out with us. We're doing a play. And then she's in the play later. Like it, this is like a I loop of like, logic. Clearly, this is the waitress. <laughs> Just like in that paragraph, we got aliens, we got witches, we got scientifically yes. altered waitresses. Yeah, I mean, that's a hundred percent what happens. Like, like it's, that, this is yeah. what the whole book is like. Just like yeah. such a hodgepodge of so many different things. I think what I do like about it though, like, because so again, like I complained extensively about how much I disliked that like Gardens of the Moon doesn't tell you anything. And it seems like it's intentionally just withholding information for the sake of withholding it. I know everybody kill me over that. But like, that's how it felt. I couldn't identify a reason why information needed to be withheld. You know, like it, I didn't see that it served a purpose narratively. I didn't see how this like benefited it or like how it made something else stronger. Like I, I was like, what is the point of withholding information here? I don't get it. Whereas here, like, I feel like the thing that sticks out to me more than the puzzle box. Cause I know Bethany likes the puzzle box. And I don't like puzzle boxes. The, to me, what I like is how almost like a method, me like method <laughs> acting is this way he's telling it. Where like, it's what Severian would notice. It's what Severian would comment on. It's what Severian would care about. So like the yeah. fact that they, that their Citadel is an old spaceship that is now like disused and in disrepair. 
I mean, uh, a more traditionally written book would tell you that. But Severian wouldn't think to tell you that. He might not really even know that or may not put it into words in that way. That's just not going to be like, you wouldn't bother describing skyscrapers and what they're made out of. They're just, that's a city. Like, that's just how it is. So like the way that like, he never tells you anything explicitly, unless it's something Severian would explicitly notice and want to tell you about. And so like, there's clues sprinkled throughout because when Severian <laughs> describes something in passing, such as like Neil Armstrong on the moon, if you pay attention to it, you can be like, that's what that is. But he's yeah. never going to like be like, so here's this fun artifact of the like, old time <laughs> that I want to tell you. Isn't that cool that I did that? It's there, but Severian wouldn't describe it that way. And he wouldn't think about it that way. And he wouldn't write about it that way. So yeah, the book doesn't I, do that. <laughs> I actually, I think I tabbed that part because I just thought it was so interesting. <laughs> like the Neil Armstrong thing. Okay. Can I just like read this? couple sentences about it as an yeah. example as an example of how you have to like pay close attention and if you do you might pick up on stuff okay so it's Severian's like in a hall with a guy who's cleaning old pictures okay he says the picture he was cleaning showed an armored figure standing in a desolate landscape it had no weapons but held a staff bearing a strange stiff banner the visor of this figure's helmet was entirely of gold without eye slits or ventilation. In its polished surface, the deathly desert could be seen in its reflection and nothing more. Which like, perfect example of like, it's a picture of Neil Armstrong on the moon clearly, but like that Severian is describing it the way he would interpret it, which I just think is interesting. Yeah, I thought that was well done. And I actually quite, like that disorientation if I feel like the author is kind of in command of it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't disagree that he was straight, he was good about his point of view. Like he had yeah. Yeah. discipline with the point of view he chose. And then he'd actually, I mean, like to your point, I, I have no idea if N.K. Jemison was inspired by this or not, but I mean, to your point, I enjoy N.K. Jemison a lot and I enjoyed this a lot. And what we kind of talked about in the World Hoppers video where we talked about Jemison and whether or not her voice works for you because a lot of people are put off by Jemison's voice and in the Jemison books you never forget about the author you never forget that the author is telling you this story and that the author is an active participant in how you experience this and how they're choosing to tell it to you and so there's frequent moments in in Shadow and Claw where Severian stops to tell you what he has chosen to tell you and he'll mention that he's not really bothered to tell you about this other thing. And he'll tell you why he's not bothered to tell you about this other thing. He'll reflect that maybe, maybe he's mad, maybe he's insane, maybe he can't trust his own recollection, but he also goes out of his way to tell you that he's got like perfect photographic memory. And you're like, okay, dude, you want me to know that clearly, do you though? So like, it's very like, you you never forget. It's never just like, oh, like the prose melts away and you're just like in a story. You never yeah. forget who is telling you the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he'll directly talk to the people he's talking to as well, which I think is fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, okay. So like the thing, one thing that reminded me, um, like made me think of some stuff in the Broken Earth trilogy with N.K. Jemisin is um, they're like in the second half of it when they get near what is it called like like the, the not the palace but the citadel the citadel no where the like where the autark lives the house absolute. the house of the house absolute. absolute yeah so when they get to the house absolute he notices in the garden he sees these kind of white stone looking almost people that move slowly or whatever but like the descriptions of that reminded me of i don't want to spoil things but like of uh, beings that exist in the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. And so there were like little things like that where I was like, I wonder if there was like some inspiration drawn from some of that. I don't know. Could be. And someone mentioned Mark Lawrence. I don't know if he was directly um, inspired by this, but I, that is definitely like a dying earth. Yeah. It's in that subgenre, I think. Yeah. I also didn't like those books. <laughs> what? I love those books. Too. I loved them. I thought they were great. <laughs> This okay. This is totally the kind of thing I would like. Like I liked this. For no, the I'm not surprised that you like. It. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, like, <laughs> it's the reason I like Dune slash the puzzle box. Like this is this is the kind of this is yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. I also, I mean, we kind of touched on this already, but we haven't really like explicitly talked about how it is uh, arguably 
Like, you like, I have to respect the effort of the fact that these are not made up words. These are yeah. all, he, he's bothered to find so cool. like ancient lexicons of like, these are like, like you, you feel like, uh, what's the word for black? It's Fulogen. Fulogen. That's a real yeah. word. That's not yeah. made up. When like, they sent me that article, I went and Googled all the words that they said, yeah. like all of the stuff are like actual, like archaic English terms. I was like, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Like the nerd in me loves <laughs> Well, and I thought, like, yeah, the pr the idea of the kind of story I think is cool. Yeah, um, you just loathe the execution. Yeah, basically. But I mean, like, but I, you know, I thought the appendix like that I thought was a cool conceit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I think there there's like a meta element to this that I could see people yeah. enjoying. Yeah. yeah, like I get why people might like it. It just it was just painful for me personally to read. <laughs> Well, it's also, I mean, to me, like uh, a a dying earth where it's not just a dying earth. Like, it's not like humanity didn't develop amazing technology. It did. And it left. And so the people left behind are basically retreating into a medieval like lifestyle because they not, not only I mean, it doesn't even I think at one point he has a conversation with somebody. I think it's with Vodalus where Vodalus is like. It's not that we don't know how to do this anymore. It's that the Earth no longer has the resources. Like, it doesn't matter if you know how to build a spaceship. We no longer have naturally occurring the fuel you need, the material yeah. that you need. Like, it doesn't, like, our Earth can barely support us. So, like, it's not that people stopped being able to invent or stopped being able to to do things. It's that the Earth no longer supports you doing this. And so we all are, like, fighting for ourselves. <laughs> Well, like iron has become a valuable substance because it's rare. And I mean, so. you know, I think in terms of like that as an idea or like the entire dying earth subgenre, as you know, we're impacted increasingly by climate change, like that becomes a very yeah, relevant subgenre or resonant, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, reading Broken yeah. Earth <laughs> again. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Like I'm listening to. Um, I don't know if people watch or listen to the Adventure Zone, uh, which is a podcast, and it's like D and D. It's a family that does D and D together. But this this cycle, they're basically doing a um, a world that is poisoned by the magic that they've used, and so they're like retreating to the to live in an underwater city. And it's like, oh, wow. yeah. So, yeah. Relevant metaphors. Yeah. Um. I mean, there is a lot of like weird stuff in here. Cannibalism. We haven't Cannibalism. mentioned that. <laughs> the yep. cave monkeys. Which again, that's that's the that's the part where he's referencing the time machine. Yeah. Well, also, I just felt like they're still on Earth, but like evolution has still been occurring. So these apes are now becoming more like people. Well, they so also have mad. brought back much like, you know, yeah. how like we have like lots of like flora and fauna and animals in, you know, the in North America that don't natively occur here because mm -hmm. colonialization and expansion, people bring stuff over. So now like out of like other planets, like we have animals, like the thing that they use to like be able to absorb the knowledge of a person that they've cannibalized, like is a thing from outer space. Like, yeah, so, like <laughs> they have, you know, yeah. non-native flora, fauna and animals. I thought yeah, that was I interesting. I mean, it's <laughs> like the cannibalism thing oh. is interesting because it's like gross, but also I found, you know, I found it interesting because clearly it's like a metaphor for um, like a, like a, a version of communion, like yes. as a Catholic writing this, which I just, I don't know. I thought it was. <laughs> but it's, I mean, yeah, it's once again, where like, he's very intentionally made Severian kind of, you know, this like lecherous torturer and then communion is like literal cannibalism. And he's like purposely making very yeah. Catholic imagery and very like Christ-like imagery and making it unpleasant and like difficult. To, Perverse. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and everyone's just like, yeah, so it was a hell of a thing. <laughs> I mean, well, we're all just exhausted after reading it. Yeah. Yeah. I, ironically, I think D slumped me because the thing I read after this, I liked so much just because it wasn't this. <laughs> me <You're> too. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I like, like um, it was a, 
<laughs> I did obviously I liked it, but like picking up a book after this, it felt like uh if you've ever like put weights on when you're like exercising and then you take them off and you're like, oh, I can walk around no problem. So like reading a book after it, I was like, oh, like this is I don't have to reread anything, like just fly right through this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, it was kind of weird for me because I was, I mean, I wasn't telling people because it was a secret till today, but like I was, I was reading this at the same time as I was reading um, Last Argument of Kings by Abercrombie. I don't necessarily recommend oh, reading them together. <laughs> like it was, I was kind say, of that weird, sentence like, like had a dangerous beginning. You said you were reading First Law and you don't recommend people no. reading. And I was like, no. you're about to die. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, the book, I did like Last Argument of Kings. Okay. <laughs> But um, I, I don't know that like it was the ideal way to read either of these books was reading them together because they're both like these dark speculative things that have some like weird stuff. And like, I don't know. It was, well, it was the four of us also yeah. all talked a lot about Abercrombie as compared to Gene Wolfe in terms of because obviously like Abercrombie books are nothing like this at all. Yeah. But in terms of depicting something that the author doesn't condone and communicating to the reader that the author does not condone this while while also making these your POV characters. Like Abercrombie, like today is like is a is a great example of like you can have your all your POV characters be intensely problematic. And yet at no point is the reader going Googling, does Abercrombie condone this? Like you don't question that ever because the way he's written it. Whereas yeah. Book of the New Sun could be written in a way where you don't have to Google Gene Wolf to find out if he condones misogyny. You know? Like you you can communicate that to the reader in the text and Abercrombie because he's the goat does it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I don't again like I've I've enjoyed plenty do you ever seen kitten hi hi sweetie I have kitten time sorry we had a long oh, it might a, be kitten time a kitten interlude Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see her here. She like she likes to be on my boobs. So anyway, hi. This is going it's to their really booktube like debut. Her. He really likes boobs. <laughs> hi. Sorry, I'm now I'm just like so, staring at this cat. So fresh. No, we had a lull. So Quick ad okay. break. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. What were we talking about? This book? About Abercrombie. Versus Abercrombie? Like Communicating <laughs> that you don't condone this while still depicting it. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think this also just gets into, like, there's plenty of books I've enjoyed that have problematic or, like, even just, like, things I hate in them. Dracula. So if I'm liking <laughs> I can, like, I can say, okay, like, this is yeah. the part of this book I don't like, but I still mm -hmm. like the rest of the book. And yeah. this was just a situation where I both didn't like the book and then that made me not like the book even more. Yeah. There. Which I think, I mean, I think that's true. I kind of my I mean, I guess I shouldn't say all readers, but I think anytime you like something, you're gonna be willing to like give a lot of things a pass versus if you're already disliking something, then you'd be like, and this also, you know what? That annoys me too. And this also don't like that so you're just yep. gonna nitpick it more if you don't like it because i mean yep. i do that all the time <laughs> guilty <laughs> there's it's kind of like what i was i've said before of like a lack of going with itness and like yeah I can think you just go with it where, please <laughs> yeah well, like, this is a book where i had a lack of going with itness like at some point i was like no I, you've run it you've expired my goodwill and i'm not <laughs> going with this anymore <laughs> i think really once you hit the second book the first book I didn't love, but like, I think if I'd stopped there, probably I wouldn't have disliked the reading experience. But get it, in terms of like yeah. why pair them up, like it makes sense because where the first one ends isn't really a proper ending. It ends with like, so I'm just gonna leave you there. Like it's Severian being like, hey, stay tuned for next week where I continue the story, but where that's where I'm gonna leave you now. Bye. <laughs> like it makes sense yeah. to pair them up that way. Cause like the, the end of the first one, you're just like, what, what, that's not an ending. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. I, it is true, though, that the misogyny really, really revs up in book two. So, like, yeah. 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 Kind of everything revs up in book two. True. Just misogyny is one of the everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything gets so much more bananas. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I don't know. I just like, I just thought there were so many like interesting moments where I was like, oh, like Googling things to figure out like what things were referencing and I don't know. It was, it was fun. Um, I think we're, I've definitely, since we started playing D&D, Bethany, I've like learned how much you like, just you want to see all the things. Like. <laughs> well, it's funny. It annoys my husband because I'm the same way when I play video games. So will be like, can we just do the main quest? And I'm like, no, I need to see everything and explore all the little things. Which makes me think I don't I don't know that we should go on vacation together because I would be like, I'm not I'm not gonna read every placard in this museum with you, Bethany. <laughs> Yeah. I, you know what, with museums, I have like a time limit where my brain just is done. So I will read everything, but like, then when I'm done, I'm done. So I'll yeah. just like, like after a couple hours, I'm like, okay, and we will see more next time. <laughs> like, so. Later. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's, that is how I am. It's true. <laughs> Little murder. Mm -hmm. Did you hear no, me I'm out? Literally, I'm not staring at you, Amanda. I'm staring at the cat. I mean, you're beautiful. <laughs> so somebody said they're taking a wild guess. The tiny one's name isn't Severian. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this kitten is uh, is Leanna's new child. Leanna is going to be adopting this kitten that I found in my yard, and I had a catch, <laughs> and we caught it, and now it's like really sweet. Yeah. It has two names because we're unsure of its gender. <laughs> I think it's a girl. I'm I'm fairly certain it's a girl now. Yeah. Tell well, us what you are, little baby angel. Can we wait? <laughs> Do we know how much she weighs if she's ready to get spayed? Oh, I don't know. I think maybe six to eight weeks old, but not very heavy. I would say maybe like a pound or two. Yeah. They have to be at two pounds. Yeah, it's like it's really little. <laughs> My boyfriend's moving a little thing in the background. <laughs> I was telling someone else about the two names that I have planned, and they said that I should do a gender reveal where I dress up the cat like whichever of the names it fits. <laughs> you should don't accidentally start a, a forest well, fire. That's what I said. I was like, and then I'll start the wildfire of 2021 with my gender reveal. <laughs> Dirty paws. <laughs> Dirty paws. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I was saying too that I want it to be a boy so I can call it Dirty Paws uh, Bastard of the Kennel. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a girl, but she looks like she has a little hood, like a Nez would wear. Like a Nez. But, um, yeah, so I guess I may as well tell everyone. It's either uh, Kaz El Glocta or Inej Dan Augustus. Which would you I like, Baby it. Angel? What's your name? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, gender non conforming, so. Yeah, I've but we also talked about how Kaz so is also a girl's name, so it could remain yeah. Kaz El Glocta. It could be Kaz. <laughs> yeah, it does look like a Kaz. It does. I think. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's technically a feral cat. I just found it, but um, which is so it's, Kaz it's, of it. <laughs> it tends to live in indoors real quick. It's real friendly. It likes to lay on boobs. It we litter box trained it in no time. And it and it eats it eats soft food. I don't know if it likes hard food yet, like like regular kibble. It makes but, me uh, wonder if like either somebody was feeding it and it like wandered off because it's surprising. No, it was always in the cactus because that's the mom. Like, I had this huge agave, and like mom cats sometimes have babies and they stick them in there because like big predators can't get in because it's a cactus. Yeah, and it's been in there for a few weeks. So we thought like two weeks ago we couldn't catch it, and then. The mom just stopped coming back, so then we had to lure it out of the cactus like at midnight. <laughs> My boyfriend is trying not to get stabbed by a cactus, Aww. and then we got it out, and now it's our, it's our little friend. Amanda and her boyfriend are heroes for saving a kitty. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Sometimes she starts grooming herself, so she's like real comfortable. Like she's like taken to be an indoor indoor cat like real well. Yeah, she's living the, the luxury life. Wait till she sees all the stuff she can knock over here. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, those protectors. I just like, I mean, I've never had a pet before. So like <laughs> all my stuff is like at the very edge of a table. Cause it looks cool there. Like, <laughs> I have so many like breakable jacket things just everywhere. <laughs> You'll find out, like, I feel like every pet is destructive in its own unique way. Like our children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> mine like to chew on cords, but they don't they don't really knock things off of counters. Whereas Bess, who we play D and D with, her uh, her cats, all they want to do is knock things off of. I remember yeah. a friend of mine when I was visiting, like her roommate had a cat that was, well, it was a kitten and they were training it to not climb on the counters with like a spray bottle. But like uh, he would like pop his head up because he'd be sitting on a bar stool and his like little face would pop up. And then she would just hold up the spray bottle. She wouldn't spray it. And he would just go because he was waiting to be sprayed. <laughs> he knew it was coming. <laughs> My cats like they you can tell what they know when they're like doing something they shouldn't be doing. Like I'll catch them, you know, trying starting to get into things and they'll like which is when right Kaz, Kaz will be told the deal is the deal stop it <laughs> look how cute she is oh. yeah it's not that dissimilar from having small children yeah <laughs> we bought a little tiny uh, kitten party so she can explore and not hide under like the couch <laughs> so we had her on the kitten harness yesterday she was playing around I'll let her explore a little bit and she likes belly rubs, so she's already like really taken to be with people. That's so. When when is the cat uh, when changing hands? hands? When all of the stuff that I've ordered for the cat arrives, like a litter box, <laughs> essentials, <laughs> and the landlord okay. Yeah. Good. Yay! That's exciting. She's a short haired. I mean, she's like the least um, intrusive pet you can have. I mean, I, I guess apart from like a hamster or something, but. This is full belly rub territory. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the least intrusive pet is a goldfish. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Don't think you need to pay pet rent for a goldfish. True. <laughs> they also don't do anything. <laughs> so Shadow and Claw so anyway, Shadow doesn't and have Claw. any cute so, fuzzy animals it to its not. detriment. It Maybe if Severian had an animal friend that he goes did. along on he his adventures. Yeah, but it wasn't going on him. It's not like Night Eyes going on the adventure with Severian. Yeah. Oh, he did God. name a tricycle, which I thought was funny, though. How do <laughs> you say that? How do you think that dog's name? Is it Tricolele or something? I they pronounce it, it as tricycle in the tricycle? audiobook. Yeah. So it has three legs, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I was, if you can't tell, when just I like an F -up name for a three legged dog. Fantasy book, I just like look, I view a name I can't pronounce in a fantasy book as a symbol and don't even try to pronounce it in my head. I'm just like, that name. Yeah, I feel like if I hadn't had the audiobook, I would have been a lot of like V, blah, 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 K, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, but the yeah. names, like, it was really cool to hear them all. Like, they sound like cool. Like, that's one of the things, like, I, again, I didn't really like Dune, but I love the names in Dune. They're such namey names, you know? Like, I find excuses to say them when I talk about Dune. I'm like, I don't actually have anything to say about these characters, but I want to say their names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Paul Atreides. It's like a good name. I don't like mm -hmm. Paul Atreides. I said what I said. I don't, I'm not into Paul Atreides. <laughs> Fade Rotha, Duncan Idaho, like they're well, all good names. They're, they're good, good names. names. They, they, are. Names. they are. It's true. Yeah. Well, Leanna and I are gonna read on. Boy, <laughs> God bless. <laughs> I, I'll um, and I, I'll, I'll try to read the rest of this Wikipedia page to okay. find out. What happens. There is also after there is a fifth book called The Earth of the New Sun. I did yeah, also pre-order the happen. hard the hardcover of Shadow and Claw. Oh yeah, uh -huh. let's let's do a plug for the fact that Tor is releasing hardcovers of Shadow and Claw and Sword and Citadel. They They're quite nice. Pretty. They are. Uh, I'm probably going to pre-order the other one also, but so far. I've <laughs> I mean, I can't judge you. I did order the hardback copy of um, the latest Lindsay Sands uh, Highlander book, so. Well, I bought the uh, totally the same. <laughs> yeah, me and me and I. Also, Bethany, the I don't know. I actually, I actually, I don't know about, uh, but I actually, I bought the mass market, and it's on my TBR for this month because I'm in the mood for from some like light romance to wrap things up. It's Rory's book, so it's particularly it's a good one. Also, the man titty on those covers is truly exquisite. That's not Rory to me. Rory's a soft boy doctor. Why is this beefy dude on the cover? I don't know, because he doesn't look like all his other, you know, beefy brothers. Back anyway. to cool additions real quick, though. Like, I signed up to be, <laughs> signed up to be notified for when Folio Society has Book of the New Sun 
back again because their editions that are newly illustrated are they are illustrated is there's an interview you? on youtube on with like the illustrator yeah. and how he went about it's pretty wild somebody just followed me because i did a TikTok about this and then a guy on TikTok followed me who has the folio society editions and like has oh, I want videos those. about them yeah. they're so beautiful they need to do folio societies of broken earth trilogy i've seen that campaign on twitter I would also first love, them. please. <laughs> <laughs> please. There's a new Agatha Christie folio edition. I should mm -hmm. look into getting it. It's Crooked House, which I really love. So, uh, yeah. Nice. I just like, I want folio. As soon as I like a book, I'm like, hey, folio, <laughs> make this one too. <laughs> it's folio. Yeah. Broken Earth, I would do. It's like one of my favorite series. I'm like, I well, yeah. I mean, like, I, as much as like, like, obviously, like, First Law is like, I don't know if you know this, but I really like the First Law books. What? But um, <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> despite like, there aren't any, like, there isn't like, uh, obviously a folio edition. But he did get sub press editions, and he did get some special editions from Goldsboro. So there's been some editions, uh, and yeah. there's like the hardcovers that I know Mara has those as well that are from Golands. Um, so he's got some nice ones, but Broken Earth just is just literally just like the paperbacks. Like that's that's they, it. No, no, they did do um, they they did do subterranean press editions, but I oh, think okay. they sold out really fast. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind surprised. Well, subterranean press editions almost always sell out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for that I'm reason, waiting, I'm like, waiting for my uh, it, but... my Sylvia Marina Garcia sub press novella that I pre. <laughs> Which I one? She's got she's got a novella coming out with them. Um, the like the return of the sorceress. It's coming um, out late late June, and they have yeah. like a. a their, anyway. Yeah, because I I was like, it's be beautiful ones is a full length, right? Like I was confused about which book you're talking about. Yeah, no, it's a new one, and I had an ER because I've already read it and I liked it, which I guess is good because I'm gonna have the hardcover. <laughs> but yeah. Well, final thoughts? I think the I thoughts think from the chat it. are that the book is confusing and the cat is cute. Is that yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. This is the sort of thing that I would probably enjoy. You know what? Maybe because I, I just end up having Leanna on all my podcast episodes. <laughs> But maybe we can. Hey, it's me. Can, <laughs> you should just be my co-host officially. You're on like so many of them. But um, no, I, I would like to do an episode like digging into all of the details. Like maybe once we finish the rest of the series, because it's one, like, I think that would be fun. Like, I what do have the companion book in my cart on Amazon. It's called like Solar. What's it called? I know what it's called. Hang on. It's called Solar Labyrinth. It's Exploring Gene Wolf's Book of the New Sun by Robert Borsky. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's for good. the Uber nerd. <laughs> I would I would be into that. I think that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Same. Okay. I don't know what's happening okay. to me. This is not the kind of thing. Like we talked about yesterday how Abercrombie doesn't even think a fantasy map is like a good idea like he doesn't even have a fantasy map for first law he's just like <laughs> which is definitely more my attitude like i never look at fantasy maps i never look at appendixes i never look at glossaries on I any do. book ever but I with know. book of the new sun i'm like I let's dig deeper <laughs> yeah, i love a, a real world or a fantasy map any kind yeah. of map like my i think like aesthetically they look cool but i, I don't them. ever look at them <laughs> for, like as a reference i'm just like oh, that's pretty <laughs> i just I, I, do. Well. I do if i'm into the book enough i do i read everything like i'll read author's notes and like glossaries and appendices like i'm i i love all of it. <laughs> i read all of it <laughs> i don't i just read the story then even like it. things that i love you'll hear me being like yeah what's his name like in k daniels i couldn't sit here and tell you all those characters names until i see them come <laughs> back up I'm like oh yeah that guy yeah like i just i don't i just don't remember like all the colors in red rising i know what golds are i know what reds are and i i know what pinks are and i know what obsidians are but that's because there's like main characters that are those but all the other colors that like uh, occasionally pop up i'm like what what do you do i don't, I don't know well, um, blue, there's like there's charts that tell me but i don't care i will see whereas if i forget those I'll are like back to look. spaceship drivers they're like pilots that sounds mm -hmm. right 
like, I forget her name. They, she was like one of uh, Darrow's like commanders with like that blue. I said together. maps are aesthetically pleasing, but not like reference material for me. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I don't know I like all the references and I like piecing all this stuff together I just think it's fun I also love books that you make good use of footnotes I love it I know a lot of people hate it I love it so much I like footnote, but I, I like feel very passionately that footnote that it needs to be a footnote and not an <laughs> note I get very annoyed in all books if I have to flip to the end notes rather than having them on the same page yeah, yeah, yeah. I read something with yeah. footnotes I really I love reading it on kindle when you can just like tap it and it'll like pop up over what you're reading so you don't have to like look up down and up and down and up or whatever like footnotes on kindle like, way to go <laughs> Bethany have you read um the ruin of kings by Jen Lyons no I have I think you would actually really like it I don't did you like it Leanna I thought it so you know how I said that I don't like books that make things complicated for no reason? I feel like Ruin of Kings made things complicated for no reason. <laughs> it's very complex. There's like an encyclopedia in the back. There's tons of footnotes. So I feel like you would get into cool. it. And book two is like fun. in a different country. And like there's no gender norms. Like everybody is like can choose what gender they identify as. But like they're all like mixed matched and like how their social structures are. You oh, would really like it. Yeah, yeah you that would, sounds would out hardcore. I do think it's really helpful if you do it on audio because there's, especially, oh, I've only yeah. read the first book, but like, because there's like, so like someone is telling you this from the perspective of someone else. Meanwhile, they've body swapped and then been reincarnated as something else. And you're like, who is doing what right now? Yeah, <laughs> and having the odd, because they have like multiple narrators. Oh, that's, yeah. So there's okay. multiple narrators. So you can that's keep track of like the story within the story within the story based on whose mm -hmm. voice is telling it to you. Okay. <laughs> but like, there's a full encyclopedia cool. in the back. So like, I feel like it's like, it's made for you. Man, I get excited about stuff like that. Or like when authors do um, like linguistic guides to the languages in their worlds and names like <laughs> I did that so one. you should have loved the wolf by Leo Garu. I didn't dislike it. I like. I gave it four stars. <laughs> but the language thing, in particular, yeah. the Anna Kim had I mean, words like, for things that we well, don't know. No, like the stuff that I liked about it, I really liked. It was just stuff that there. That he was interested in some things that I was less interested in. So, like, I, I liked that. I liked the wolf. I didn't get into the spider though. I haven't read it yet. Leanna also got me to read The Wolf <laughs> a while ago. Mara, you're next. <laughs> I have it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. You have oh, it? Okay. Did I know that you have it? I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious to see how Mara feels about it. I think it'll be interesting. I, be Wait, right. I don't think there's any, like, it's not, like, like his, the authorial voice is nothing like Pierce Brown or Gene Wolf. There's no, like, insane misogyny. I feel like there's a slightly higher chance that she'll be okay It's with a cool it. idea. I like, I like yeah. fantasies in general that have, like, a cool idea. And it is. I mean, it's alternate history yeah. fantasy. Like, there isn't any magic in it. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I, it is I like alternate history. It kind of reminds me of A Little Hatred <laughs> by Joe Abercrombie. Like, the story structure. Like, um... You know, like the guys who are from the north and he's like trying to become king because his dad got his head smashed. Like, I feel like that's a similar story arc. I'm not explaining things. I yet. don't see it, but okay. <laughs> I like both books, okay. so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember any of the character names. So I'm like, you know, that guy who did that thing. I'm the so same like, I'm and like the I'm dude who arc. did this. Like, I just, I'm terrible with names and books. Me too. Yeah. yeah. The guy who said he's king up in the north and then like he had that necklace he's like i'm king and then logan smashed his head in <laughs> so then logan oh. was king one second so spoilers everybody for first law <laughs> sorry <laughs> someone get their heads back it isn't that big a spoiler it's like baldor or bandor or it's like a b name right yeah yeah, yeah. Like and he had two kids I, this is only because i just finished that Credit. book uh, he has two kids, and the two kids are like grown up in a little hatred. And there's the one that's the heir, who's kind of just like the jock, and then his younger brother, who's the brain of the situation. The younger brother's like plotting how can I become king? And I just then, like, I fail to see how this is anything like the wolf. <laughs> because the the lead guy in the wolf is also trying to climb a political structure. Like I feel like there's but he doesn't have like a brother that's also. I feel like it's also about <laughs> climbing to power. I'm. <laughs> I said what I said. Yeah, I believe you. 
I highly recommend both books. But okay. <laughs> I mean, they both have politics in them. And I, I will agree that far. <laughs> and people trying to be well, also because like a little I hatred is a lot to characters do. Are similar. A little hatred is a lot to do with industrial revolution and populism. And the wolf takes place in a medieval Europe that's populated by more than one humanoid species. So like, yeah, well, they not the different. they're not the same book. I'm saying those two <laughs> character story arcs are similar. So like, they remind me of each other. I hear okay. what you're saying. I believe you. I hear you. So anyway, yeah. hey guys, you want yeah, to read yeah. it? But <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, oh next yeah. Month. Next month. I don't have my thought note. I already reading. read this one. one. Oh, that's Yay. Awesome. Yes. So this will it's be on Amanda's channel. Mercenary librarians. On the back it says Orphan Black meets post-apocalyptic Avengers. Like, I love that Orphan Black. Great. Orphan Black is such a good show. And oh, it's Lord Nalini Singh. We'll see. We shall so, see. Um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's librarians, but they're cool and they're mercenaries. So it's like action librarians. Yeah. And I am the naughty librarian. So. <laughs> Is this my pig? It's going to be on my channel the end of June. Nice. It's like two different groups of like squads. So you have a lot of like interpersonal Squad. dynamics going on. I would also like to know the answer to this. <laughs> it is um, a romance. It's urban fantasy, but it has a romance, romance in it. Romance. It's a romance in it, but it's urban fantasy. So I think it's going to be more like kind of action and yeah. adventure. There's, I mean, it definitely is a romance, um, but. I would say it's as much action urban fantasy as it is a romance. So yeah, I did buy it at the Ripped Bodice, which is a romance bookstore. So <laughs> there's wow. probably a romance in it, but it's also yeah. action adventure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the live show is on June 26th, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern over on this girl's channel. The kitten will not be here because it's going to be living with Leanna. The kitten will be here. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, have some enthusiasm. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll just get really excited. I always hope it. I'm gonna like yeah. it. I feel. I mean, we all always do. Yeah, I having read it, I could see a world where Leanna likes this. Yeah, and also Leanna likes memos. Leanna is almost impossible to like really figure out if she's gonna like something or not. The problem so, of this live show was me being unable to figure out my own taste, so I sympathize. <laughs> I mean, I if I were guessing, like I'm thinking of the books we've read this year so far that Leanna has not picked. I would say that this would be one of the ones I would be more hopeful she would like. That's what I. I'm that's just that's like waiting. I know, like, like waiting for the next book that we all like because I think is the only one like when we did Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires is that like. I I am I am for telling I am guessing that all of us are gonna like Amanda's next pick. I think that's my guess. You mean oh, not? Her, well, this is her, her next pick. You mean? Oh, sorry, her, her pick later in the year. Oh, and okay, okay. I think I think the Halloween like, show again. Yeah, the Halloween show. I think we'll all like that one. Um, I don't. Are dressing up? I don't know how I feel about. I think there's a chance we could all get into the one I picked. I don't know. Uh, I think we might all I like the Goblin one, Emperor. Though, one. Yeah, we might all like the Goblin okay. Emperor. I don't know. I, I'm hopeful. I, we'll see. Hopeful. I do want to say, I know that there's some, uh, I, I've heard some <laughs> whisperings of like, are you guys picking things that you know you're not going to like? And and the answer is no. Like we always no. pick things that It's impossible to please. So that makes it harder. Yeah. Well, it's, like, I think it's what? hard to like, like we all also have like different taste in certain things. Exactly. So like finding something that we're all going to enjoy is tricky. But like, mm -hmm. if it's our month, we get to pick it and people can veto it if they just really don't want to read it. But usually we just kind of go with whatever the person yeah. picks. So, yeah. so we all go in hoping we'll enjoy it. I'm just saying, like, I hate it. it. So yeah. No, no but I mean, like, yeah. I, like, I mean, people <laughs> accuse me of that on my own channel. And I'm like, I have never in the history of ever intentionally picked up a book like to hate read it yeah, exactly. yeah i don't know i always recommend you books and nine out of ten times you don't like them but the one time you do i get so excited yeah. <laughs> i'm like i cracked the code and then i never and crack I it again when you read something that i would have guessed you hate you would hate and you end up loving it i'm like that always makes me so excited well I'm i was so very happy i happened. i had like a 
I had like a 50% hit rate when we did our TBR swap, which is pretty good. I mean, like, again, like when I put together my own TBRs, I often have like a much lower hit rate with myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know when the bride bet's gonna come out, but maybe that will be a, a I don't imp- know either. I well, know have you seen important. some of her but have you seen some of her stuff on what she said about it on Twitter? I what's I've going on. I haven't heard anything lately. She because she tweeted a little while back talking about why part of it is she's been having some memory issues. And that's made it hard for her to write, um, which is part of why she's doing the like language stuff of with trying to learn Portuguese to try to help with her um, like the memory and language processing stuff. So yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to bring us down. I just was saying I know. (laughs) So if and when it ever comes out, I say I think it was Bethany that did that. Don't worry, Mara. (laughs) Not your fault. No, no, I just, I, that would be, I think that's a safe bet that we would all expect that we would at least like it pretty well. But the funny thing yeah. will be that we'll all end up hating it. The one that we're like, this is the one, guys, that we're picking because we're going to love it. And we'll all like, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, I mean, can you imagine if the wisdom of crowds comes out and I hate it? Can you imagine? It's hard to pick up I cannot. I'll just quit Don't my I'll just quit, quit book too. <laughs> <laughs> but see, like I think over. the Tessa Dare book, even if it's not one of my favorites from her, like I'm not gonna have a bad time in it probably. Yeah. It's still gonna be fine. Well, there's a few that are her early books that are just straight bad. Like I've said yeah. it. Yeah. She has one novella that I like actively disliked. Yeah, Which one? like some of her early books are bad. It was like uh, Once, Upon Eve? Once, Once Upon a Winter's Eve or Midwinter's oh, Eve. Oh, I something. like that one. I really like that one. I wanted to be I a whole book. It doesn't make sense to novella. Yeah, I was annoyed with it. If it had been a full length book, I would have been fine with it. But yeah, I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I uh, recommend yeah. that as like a Christmas fave. Oh, well, there you go. There you There's go. There's like a bunch, <laughs> like her old, old books. Um, eh. These ones. The oldest oh, ones. I, I think I read Goddess of the Hunt and liked it okay. It was all right. And then you go to Surrender of a si- Siren, and it's like it made my worst book to the year list. It was so bad. Really? It's so bad. Wow. You're like, how yeah. did this happen? It's a pirate story. How is this bad? How is this bad? Yeah. After we did it, it's a fluke. It's a fluke. Let's move on to book three. Even worse. <laughs> Well, yeah, as they say, you can, please, some, you can please some people all of the time and all some of the time, but you can't please yeah. all people all of the time. Yeah. Yeah. But this is her first book she ever wrote. So I like it. This is her first series. They're old. Yeah. They're not her best work. Uh, but, you know, The Blade itself is the first thing that Joe Abercrombie ever wrote. And um, there you go. I'm just saying. Well, Joe Abercrombie <laughs> is special. <laughs> yeah. I th- I actually had Goddess of the Hunt on my TBR and I unhauled it after we did that podcast episode yeah. about Tessa Dare and you talked about them. I was like, maybe yeah, I just won't read that. Story. Well, like my whole like, my wife, that book and that book. Oh, this book is also not great either. But like my whole thought process on this book was like, girl, no dick is that good. Like, why are you with him? Like that's, that's true in life, though, right? I mean, like yeah, sometimes. No dick is that good. <laughs> Like, so uh, the, the early ones are not that great. I just, like, if anyone clicked on the thumbnail for this and just joined now, they would be so confused. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you talking about this? <laughs> like, ah. Uh... We are uh, tantalizingly diverse in our in our case and enjoyment. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Anyway. Well, so I hope so, everyone joins us next month for some urban yeah. fantasy fun. I love urban fantasy. I and do. That'll, that'll be fun. And Leanna, I'm happy that you picked this because I probably yeah. never would have read it and I really I, liked it. So. You know what? I It's a foundational text and a subgenre I enjoy. So even if I didn't like this, I appreciate... Uh, Honestly, you know. like, I think all of us are going to be more 
I mean, it's kind of like when you read Dune and then you're like, oh, wow. So everything is based on Dune. <laughs> like, oh. Or like, Lord so, of the like, like, oh, all high fantasy is based on this. Cool. Yeah. So I think yeah. like I'm reading yeah. on from now on, you know, when you read like other well-known SFF, like that's come yeah. after. You're like, like, oh, I yeah. see. Well, that like, it's funny. I think when you read like foundational text, that's how it is. Because like it was the same way, like when I read like Sister Outsider by Audrey Lord this year, I was like, oh, this is where all these books got that thing <laughs> like, <Yeah>. got it <laughs> or i read um the fire next time this year from james baldwin and i was like oh so like everything from ta codes and um some of ebra mix can be and you know etc cetera, etc cetera. it's like oh okay cool. yeah yeah well, i mean cool. i read this I think I read this. <laughs> blur, that's yeah, the blur for did. the cover. I read it. this. <laughs> we did it. Um, I feel well, like you just you need that that yeah. gif of Frodo with the fires of Mount Doom behind him, and that's yeah. just saying it's done. It is done. <laughs> I'm filming and I'm after this, and this is going to be a part of it. So that's you know, my, my local used bookstore will enjoy getting. Someone will I mean, be you're. But you're unhauling it, it. You're unhauling it because you pre-ordered the hardcover, right? That's exactly right. The same <laughs> way that I have like monstrous editions in here that I'm unhauling because I got that beautiful hardcover, Bethany. <laughs> Shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, it's the exact yeah. same situation. That's what I thought. Totally. totally. The Folio Society editions. You're exactly. That's what you got. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, I, I, I read this. I read yeah. this. I need to make merch because everyone tells me I should put these things on shirts because I say random shit all yeah. the time. <laughs> Honestly, that's like well, there's I like think, a lot of books that like I say that like I don't say that I want to read this. I say that I want to have read this. <laughs> like I want this to be a thing that I have. This is a, like I know it and I've experienced it, but I'm yeah. not looking forward to experiencing <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. well, I think it's funny you were like. Leanna joking when I saw I said about something like I didn't hate it and you were like yeah great blurb I didn't hate it that's what you said about <laughs> Abercrombie you were like I didn't hate it and I was like great <laughs> no I mean I liked it but I think it was like I think it was that you were like well, yeah. I was like I didn't hate I meant it and like I didn't hate it I liked it but I fair point yeah so. I feel like but this is what happens anytime like one of a book that you like love will be like four stars for me and then it's like wait In fairness, but why the first time that i read the blade itself and before they were hanged i gave them four stars each the only I one i gave five stars, stars first time. but i'm excited to keep going the four last hundred dude yeah that's what i think the, the last 150 pages of last argument of kings is like I mean, honestly, no. like, I think it's a little for Bethany to give it four stars and then for her to say, I didn't hate it. Like, excuse me, you borderline loved it. You gave it four stars. No, I really liked it. I, 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 I think it was more in response to whatever you had said before, like, as if I was being overly critical. And I was like, I didn't. No, I did. I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that last 150 pages is just like. I I really like that series. Liana got me to read that too. It's, we have a Venn diagram of books we like, and there's like a juicy center of Tessa things we Dara like. Most of it's just like not on the sides. <laughs> just Tessa Dare and Joe Abercrombie. That's <laughs> we have like a juicy, like a yeah. fudge core of a lava cake. <laughs> well, <laughs> Liana, Liana got me to read. Um, Name of the Wind, which is one of my favorite and books. And Strange now, the so. Dreamer. And Strange the Dreamer. Yes. I read, well, I read Strange the Dreamer because I wanted to without Leanna's input. And then, and then Name of the Wind, she, she, she kept saying for years of our friendship, <laughs> Me too. You need to read this. And then she picked it for book club and I read it. <laughs> I made all y'all read The Lives of Lock that. <laughs> Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I need to reread it. Like that's that a fun book. I need to reread. Because I was not in a mindset to be reading it when I was reading it. Yeah, I don't think I really remember much for similar reasons. Amanda, great. Just, Let's uh, read Lies of Lock Lamora for my next pick. <laughs> yeah, I kept I kept saying I'm like, is John gay? Like, I feel like he's in love with Lock, and everyone's like, no. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> they're secret boyfriends to me. <laughs> so, oh, some, this is funny. Somebody said, uh, <laughs> I read Shadow. I love these like merch ideas. <laughs> We're changing the comments. Sorry. <laughs> I read Shadow and Claw and all I got was this shirt. Yeah. 
I read this, have that quote and list all the books you read in 2021. Oh, that would be fun. What if we did Blaze and Bottom Strippers book club merch? Would people be into that? If we did that? I, I would be, I'd buy my own shirt. <laughs> that's that you could make it like all oh, those like band tour t-shirts, you know, where they list all the yeah. cities they went to like, on like, tour. <laughs> That would be fun. We could yeah. design. Would would people in the stream be into that if we designed something? We've like driven that? them all <laughs> off with cats and bodice rippers and Abercrombie <laughs> tangents. No one is here anymore. <laughs> There's like 48 people watching. I can't. I can't. It'd be, you know what? Like at the end of the year, like you know those shirts that say like the names, like blank and blank and blank and blank. Like it had our names in the front and then mm -hmm. the back, like list of all the books you read. And there are going to be so many random ass books. Everyone's going to be like, "What is this?" <laughs> I just want everyone. The not question to is, that. why are we friends? <laughs> <laughs> this is an event diagram. It's four circles that are like adjacent. No, <laughs> no, there's there is some crossover. We all like Southern Book Club Guide to Sleep. We cross over at well. vampires. <laughs> well, oh. Yay! Right. Cool. Right. I like how we end all of our group chats on our friendship. We're like, we're friends, and we We're all just think that we can hype each other up. It's a great, like, it's a we, great we can that. model model friendship when you don't agree on everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on <them> different things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good point. From Dare to Abercrombie, we have a wide range of things. They, they both have sex scenes. This is. <laughs> They do. <laughs> you. This is they a fact. Do. They do. You should make a shirt. I'm rereading the first law this year, and you could just wear it every year. <laughs> you could at all times. At all yeah. times. <laughs> well, I think I. It was funny because, like I said in my vlog, I went from like listening to a Bridgerton book to Last Argument of Kings, and they both well, have sex, like explicit sex scenes, and I was like, this very different. <laughs> I got so mad. I went to Target yesterday and they had like a support black authors. I saw that in your Insta story. And it was just oh, Bridgerton. Yeah. And I was like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, below below the sign, they had a yeah. couple of, but there yeah. There were two below, but then it wasn't all like. Yeah. Like, I think product placement showing, people. Yeah. I'm like, this is awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just yeah. confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not great. Anyway. Well, anyway. <laughs> well, so, on that note. <laughs> we, read we read this. We're going to read this. So yeah. can we can we have a live show discussing the different types of sex scenes? I think I got they, they all, I think they also requested that. <laughs> I think like, you did that on my vlog. Too. I think YouTube would object to that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it on your podcast. We could, but you would miss out on all of the like gesturing and facial expressions. Well, just like you have uh, very different reasons why you might have sex, you also can get very different kinds of sex scenes. So you know, true. We could talk about that. All right. All right. <laughs> so on that note, <laughs> on that note, join us next month on yep. Amanda's channel. Yay. Yay! Last Saturday of June, eleven a.m. Pacific. <laughs> Yes. Thanks as always for hanging out. Yeah. See you guys in a month. Bye. Bye. Bye.